My number one goal today is to alter the course of your lives, to open up your young eyes, and hopefully learn from my many bad decisions and many bad choices. Decisions and choices that I made in my past that altered the course of my life and my family's lives for the rest of our lives. Even though my name is Mary Elizabeth Taylor, I always went by Lizzie or Liz Taylor. This is my name. This is my story. For your benefit, please listen carefully. I was born in the land of the free, but what I chose to do with my freedom altered the course of my life and my family's lives forever. I was raised in Hollywood. When I was growing up, we had no electronic gadgets whatsoever. The only things my hands had to play with were toys, and this is what my toy box looked like. Since there was nothing else to do, I would spend hours, endless hours, playing with the few toys I had. The streets were relatively safe when I was growing up, so I was free, free to roam and run around my neighborhood all alone. And that's what I did most of the time, what I call on the hunt. I was always hunting, hunting for the things that moved and crawled. When I was old enough, I was given more freedom, a bicycle, and I was free, free to venture further out in the world by myself. Then I was given a skateboard, no longer hunting for the things that moved and crawled, but for steep long hills that I could fly down and hunting for beautiful places that were pleasing to my eyes. I loved all sports. I played hardball baseball and tennis too. At 15, I started hanging around the wrong crowd. That decision I made altered the course of my life and my family's lives for the next 25 years. When offered, I said yes, and my hands picked up and tried my first cigarette forever altering the course of my life and my family's lives. I liken me holding on to a cigarette to my holding on to a bullet, the bullet that will one day take my life. Over time, I found myself addicted and chained to smoking because it is no longer a want. It slowly became a need, an addiction. Once addicted, it's hard to stop. One cigarette always, always leads to more cigarettes. A deadly addiction. Did you know that there are almost 500,000 smoking-related deaths each year? When offered, I said yes, and my hands picked up and tried my first marijuana cigarette, forever altering the course of my life and my family's lives. Over time, I found myself addicted and chained to smoking pot. Because it is no longer a want, it slowly became a need, an addiction. Once addicted, it's hard to stop. One marijuana cigarette always, always leads to more marijuana cigarettes. Alcohol is a huge problem for millions of people. It was for me immediately. Another deadly addiction. For sure, alcohol alters life or will take life, or will get you life, because it is easy to get addicted to, and really hard to stop, forever altering the course of many lives. When offered, I said yes, and my hands picked up and tried my first illegal pill, altering the course of my life and my family's lives forever. I liken me holding on to an illegal pill, to my holding on to a bullet, the bullet that will one day take my life. Over time, I found myself addicted and chained to pills. Because it is no longer a want, it slowly became a need, an addiction. Once addicted, it's hard to stop. The same reaction to candy. At first, my addictions just took me away from me. And that's what I was always looking for, a feeling a feeling to change the way I was feeling, the way I always felt about me and about you. Like I said, at first, my addictions just took me 
away from me, but over time turned me against me. They took me away from all of you, but then turned me against you. Because now I'm on the hunt, more. Nothing else mattered. And I'm hunting for strangers who do what I'm addicted to doing. And it didn't matter who you are, where you are from, or what you look like. I started to lose interest in the fun hunt. I no longer had time to do the fun things I used to enjoy doing. I guess you could say I dropped the ball. But I dropped the ball on everything and everybody. Addictions cost money. Lots of money. And if you don't have lots of money, you're going to lie, steal, and cheat to support your habits. And that's what I started doing. And it didn't matter who I was ripping off. Family, places, strangers. It made no difference to me. Because of my alcohol and drug abuse, I no longer gave a care. The only thing I cared about was my next fix and what I could steal to get more of it. I didn't care how I treated anyone, didn't care how I talked to people, didn't care what I said, how I responded. Not only did my attitude suck, but my grades at school declined and declined rapidly. I stopped caring about my education, stopped caring about my future. My parents tried everything to help me help me. They got me a tutor to help get me back on track at school. We also went to family therapy at UCLA. Maybe I didn't know how to communicate to strangers how I felt inside. Maybe I didn't want to talk. Or maybe I just didn't care anymore because of the drugs and alcohol. All I know is that my life was going downhill fast, and I didn't even care about that. I just wanted to be left alone with the monkey on my back and my addictions. When I was 15 and a half, I made a decision that forever altered the course of my life and my family's lives. I stole and sold one ounce of pure gold and some diamonds from my parents. I was involved in a sting by the North Hollywood Police Department. Immediately, the handcuffs are placed around my wrists to stop me and my hands from stealing, to stop me from using and abusing illegal drugs. The two will always be intertwined. Doing illegal things makes you do illegal things, and doing illegal things gets you arrested. Immediately, I was locked in the back of a police car and was given a ride straight to juvenile hall. Then I was locked in a cold cement cell. My hands are holding onto bars that lead to nowhere. Caged in like a monkey at the zoo, I was charged and found guilty of four counts, all felonies, and was sentenced to one year in a youth program for disturbed, addicted children like me. When I got out of the program, my parents moved to Lake Arrowhead. I had fun in those mountains, water skiing and fishing and snow skiing. But when I graduated high school, I left those beautiful mountains and left on a bad note with my parents. And it would stay that way for a long, long time. I moved to Orange County with my sister. Shortly after, I moved to Laguna Beach. Now I'm having fun at the beach. I got a job at a custom cabinet shop where I learned to work wood. I was taught and my hands learned how to work heavy equipment. I also learned how to picture frame. But then I started hanging around the wrong crowd again. But now the crowd is into illegal hard drugs, white powder. When offered, I said yes and my hands picked up and tried my first snort, altering the course of my life and my family's lives forever holding on to a nasty, dirty, rolled-up bill to stick up my nose to snort this white powder. Basically holding on to another bullet that will either take my life or get me life. Over time, I found myself addicted and chained to this white powder. Because it is no longer a want, it became a need, another addiction. 
Once addicted, it's hard to stop. As with any illegal or legal drug I ever used in the past, one always, always leads to another. It's always more. Another deadly addiction. Immediately, the monkey on my back came back. I found myself hunting for strangers who do what I'm addicted to doing. At the bars. Now, I've never been to a bar. I'm only 19. But I knew a bar is a one-stop shop where there is alcohol, drugs, and strangers. One night, when my hands were holding onto the steering wheel of my car and to the bottle, I was pulled over by the California Highway Patrol, forever altering the course of my life. I was arrested for my first drunk driving. No more juvenile hall for me. I get locked up with the big girls now. But it's the same scenario. Hands holding on to bars that lead to nowhere. Caged in like a monkey at the zoo. My first drunk driving arrest at 19. I'm not going to college. I'm too stupid now. I'm not working on my career. I'm too addicted now. I'm working on time or time is working me. I didn't learn or I didn't care. Three months after my first drunk driving charge, I left the bar drunk and got into my vehicle. I was pulled over by the Laguna Beach Police Department. Once again, the handcuffs are placed around my wrists, but I know they are for protection, 100% protection, so I don't kill you or me while driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Now my life was just a chain of events. You see, once in the system, it's hard to get out of the system. You want proof? Well, here it is. I am a living testimony. Incarcerated, 20 years old. In this mugshot, I am 20. Here I am, 21 years old. I am also 21 in this pic. Here I am, 22 years old. In this mugshot, I am 23. I am also 23 in this one. In this mugshot, I am 24. I am now 25 years old. And trust me, there is no fun in jail whatsoever. If you're lucky, you get to work in jail in order to get out of your cell and they will give you some sort of handle that is attached to some sort of physical labor. And you will work really hard for the county mopping nasty floors or scrubbing nasty showers and cleaning various parts of the nasty jail. And what's sad is you get no pay for it. You work for your release date, for your freedom. That's it. That's all. The only time you get to see the free world is when you are shackled from head to toe and put on a county bus to go to court, where you could stare out the window and watch the strangers walking by. Even after those 12 arrests, I still didn't learn my lesson. When I got out of jail, I immediately start my selfish hunt, hunting for strangers who do what I'm addicted to doing. But this time, the crowd is into smoking white powder. When offered, I said yes, and my hands picked up the glass pipe. And in an instant, my whole life changed and changed drastically forever, altering the course of my life and my family's lives. I liken me holding on to a glass pipe to my holding on to a bullet, the bullet that will one day take my life or get me life. Over time, I found myself addicted and chained to white powder because it is no longer a want it slowly became a need, an addiction, that I couldn't stop. One always, always leads to more. Another deadly addiction. After my first hit, I knew I was in a lot of trouble. This addiction was more intense, more powerful. I'm no longer holding a little bullet. I felt like I was facing a loaded cannon straight on. Almost immediately after, I became homeless, living in parks, under bridges, living and sleeping on the streets. 
not even caring how dangerous the neighborhood is where I hang out in. Morning, noon, and night, the real scary, dangerous, and crazy hunt is on. I firmly believe a person can be anything they set their mind to do or be. I could have been anything or anyone, a firewoman, or an airline pilot, a doctor, a lawyer, a dentist, a teacher. I could have worked in law enforcement as a narcotics officer, a sheriff, or a police officer. I could have excelled in the Army, the Navy, or the Marines. I could have opened up my own frame shop if a career or my future was my number one priority hunt. If I didn't hang out with the wrong crowd, or if I didn't pick up the bullet of hate, pain, and poisons. Instead, I have worked at 34 different shops over my lifetime because I became an alcoholic and a drug addict. And to support my habits, my many addictions, I became a prostitute, a homeless junkie prostitute. It has been a long, sad, and brutal existence, in and out of strangers' cars, in and out of my family's lives, in and out of jail. This is the definition of institutionalized, the definition of addiction, and is also the definition of insanity. Arrested, age 26. I spent 270 days in county jail. I told you, alcohol and drugs alter life. These next three mug shots, I am 27 years old. I am now 29 years old. I am also 29 years old here, but now I'm getting arrested for felonies. And now I'm going to the bigger house, state prison. I was sentenced to 16 months for a $20 bag of white powder. And in prison, you work really hard too. And they will give you some sort of handle that is attached to some sort of physical labor, like a broom. Will you be sweeping nasty floors eight hours a day? Or a rake, will you be raking nasty leaves eight hours a day? Or picking up the nasty trash eight hours a day. But you'll get paid eight cents an hour in prison. The reason why I look so healthy in this mugshot is because I just spent two years in prison for another $20 bag of white powder. I also spent 10 months flat in solitary confinement. But I had a county warrant, so when I was released from prison, I had to go back to county jail. I am now 31 years old. I still didn't learn or I didn't care. A couple years later, I went back to the war zone and then back to the hell hole. In this mug shot, I am 34. I am also 34 in this one. These next three mug shots, I am 35 years old. In this mug shot, I am 36. In this mug shot, I am 37. I am still 37 years old and way angry. I spent over 25 years chasing the wind, fighting my own war, hunting for a feeling to change the way I'm feeling, and what a waste it's been. My family and I have paid a high price for my choices, my really bad choices. 25 years of high price was paid, and many wasted years and worthless tears have been shed along the way, along with 30 incarcerations total. I spent one year in a youth program. I spent five years in county jail. I spent eight years in state prison for a grand total of 14 years locked up from age 15 to age 39. I finally put the bullet, the bullet of hate, pain, and poisons I was holding on to down. I had to choose which crowd I want to hang out with. 
I had to choose which side of the fence I want to live and play in. Just like all of you, there are only two choices, the good or the bad crowd. Be careful who you hang out with. Be careful what you do. Pay attention to what your hands are holding on to. Alcohol and drugs do a lot of things. They alter life, take life, or get you life, period. Be careful. Be ever careful what you choose to do with your freedom, with your time. If you're doing what I did, trust me, you'll get what I got. That is 100% guarantee, 100% promise, unless you get help. It's not too late for you. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your time. If you stop right